Well, that is a beautiful Chevelle. And it's a four-speed car. Very nice, sir. Oh, it's about a thousand degrees in there. We're gonna let that air out for a minute before I get in there. Good-looking classic American racing rims. We're gonna put some rear disc brakes on this bad boy. Nice color. This is one of my favorite colors. Black interior. SS hood. 396 badges. Yeah, that's a good looking car right there. Let's get that out of there, get our C-clips out. We gotta take our center pin bolt out. Which is a fairly minor ordeal. Usually. Sometimes they're broken off. Then it's, then it's a bigger deal. These are usually locked tight to in, so you gotta wrench them all the way out. I need a 12 volt posi for my 65C10. So I'll be doing that, doing this exact same thing to it here soon so that I can make sure I have the right spline count. comes out. So that the pin can come out. Push your axle in just a bit. And the horseshoe. Well, it had to go together. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay. Aha! It was actually hooked on the um, part of the posi mechanism. That makes sense.
Oop, the exact shafts. Bearings. Wow, that thing's got a lot of pits in it. It actually needs axle shafts. You can see on this one, there's pitting on the surface where the bearings ride. So that bearing was probably bad at one time and it took the axle shaft out with it. Let's see if he wants to do that while we're in here. It's just going to cost him the parts and no additional labor because we're already in here doing it. Smoking too. I really don't feel like these need to be this tight, but they've also been in there. Brake lines, brake hoses, vacuum plates, and we have authorization to put axle shafts, axle bearings, and axle seals in it. We need to run and get those. Yeah, those parking brakes weren't even hooked up. That's nice one. Fit the hub center. Always makes for extra work. So I'm trying to mock this thing up, and I go to hang the brake caliper brackets on the rear axle, and it's got the passenger side at the 10 o'clock position, and the driver side's at the 2 o'clock position. Um, and that's awkward because this is a kit for staggered shocks. This car does not have staggered shocks, They're both on the rear position. So the gentleman that brought this uh, right stuff kit brought us the wrong kit. So luckily for us, right stuff is based right out of Westerville, Ohio, which is right around the corner here. We're going to give them a call and see if they have the correct uh, stuff on the shelf, which they probably do. And uh, we'll go pick up that kit and we'll just exchange out the parts and then this gentleman can return the kit that he ordered. Um, that's frustrating. I'm going to go to the hardware store and buy a couple capacitors for my AC unit because the AC unit in the office took a dive today on the first day of the week of the hottest week of the summer. It's of course so uh, luckily for us Jegs has axle shafts axle bearings and axle seals in stock so we will be picking those up in the morning which will allow us to continue moving forward with this project um, but we are gonna have to find the right stuff from right stuff brakes and uh, 
then we'll keep moving forward. And we also need to ask him uh, if he's upgrading the front brakes to drilled and slotted because he's got just regular ones in the back and he's got drilled and slotted for the rear. So we'll make that phone call as well. Uh, with that, I'm going to keep moving forward and uh, go to the hardware store and hopefully capacitors will fix my AC compressor for the office because that'll make tomorrow a little more bearable. Staggered. Staggered would mean this shock is actually mounted to the front. Um, and this is not staggered. As it is, I believe the brake caliper is supposed to be on the front side, on the passenger side, which allows the e-brake cable to go where it's supposed to go. So, just a minor detail. Well, we ran over to Jegs this morning and picked up axle bearings, axle seals, and some performance axles from Jegs. We should. Oh. Correct. Got a nice bearing surface. Appear to be the right thread. Hmm. I don't think those are correct. Uh, this is probably maybe it's not a sixty seven angst tool. Uh, it's always something. So this axle is probably maybe an earlier. No. Man, that thing is it's a really weird pitting to it. Uh, looks like I should have just stayed home this week. The AC unit and for the shop failed yesterday. That's gonna cost way more than I remember furnaces costing. Well, it is what it is. Work harder. Um, I'm not getting anything done on this car today. Uh, we've got the wrong axles. And the right stuff is actually building us a, a brake kit for this so that we can pick one up in, in Ohio. Because nobody has it in stock. So we're going to rebox all this stuff and let the customer deal with that. And then he's just going to pay us for the parts we're getting. From all over the state. I'm gonna go work on something else because I gotta make some money. I gotta pay for an AV HVAC unit. Alright, so minor modification. Now we have proper fitment. <clears throat> now a lot of people bore the center holes of the rotors out, but then every time you do a brake job, you have to bore the center hole out. So it's a little more work to do the axle shaft if it's in the car because um, you got to dismantle the rear end. But I'm putting axle shafts in it anyway, so I decided to just chuck them up on the lathe over next door at Trail Quest Jeep Parts. Stefan over there is a good guy and lets me use his equipment. And in return, I give him beer money so that he can fill this fridge for Friday night drinks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my wheel studs into these new axles and the JEGS axle kit did come with new wheel studs, new axle bearings and new axle seals. So that makes this kit very uh, quick and easy to do your install. Let me knock out my old seals, knock out my old bearings, install the new seals and bearings and I'm going to go ahead and use the press to put my lug studs on. So Let's put one, let's put two in and we'll test fit the rotor and figure out what we have for lug nut uh, contact with our studs. We may actually need to get longer studs for this. Yeah, I think we'll be alright. Good fitment. 
I think will be just fine. Let's put this axle together. Yeah, not bad. The JEGS kit with these axles came with Koyo bearings. And maybe a national seal. Whew, I'm already dripping with sweat and it's not even 9 o'clock yet. It's going to be a hot day today. Just glasses. Yeah, I don't know if it makes a seal. Looks like a national seal though. Who knows? Should work. Oh, come on. It normally works. Not today. Let's grab a slide hammer. Came out way too easy. Anybody got a portacool out there that they're not using? Want to loan me for a couple weeks? This is ridiculous. Check our fitment for our caliper backing plate. Um, Mid middle of the road spacer. Um, the right stuff gives you three different spacers. I use the middle one. Let's see. I think that's going to work. with the middle spacer. They give a thick pair, a middle pair, and 
a thin pair. The thin pair doubled up is the same thickness as the middle pair. Uh, but it fits nice without binding the outer pad with the middle spacer on this setup. Um, somebody else doing this might be different. But you always want to mock up one side and check that. The other side should be the same. So we will use that as our baseline. I'll go ahead and tighten down the other side and finish assembling the axle. Yay, we're moving forward. It's amazing. I know they didn't give us those axles. We paid for those. And then the customer is going to pay for those. So I'm happy with my fitment. I'm going to go ahead and assemble this side. It's so frustrating. I, I don't understand this, guys. I don't understand this. Muscle car, doing muscle cars in a production shop is not profitable. Well, like, so the axle thing, this is just stupid. Like, if we weren't who we are, if you were a random customer guy, doing this in your garage, and you just bought a set of axles and you shove them in the holes, and then you just want to mount the brakes on it. So that doesn't fit at all. Like, tab A into slot B. And that's what it kind of looked like when they, that on that Nova that yeah, came in, the, they bolted the it Nova on. Wagon. They drove it down the road, they're like, man, something's not right. I'm like, yeah, you're, you're right. So this is going to harken back to a previous video, and I'll see if I can link to it. But we had a customer that basically did exactly the same thing, but the, the rotors don't seat all the way against the face of the axle. And you can see how much I cut. It's very little mount off the, off the JEGS unit, but now they fit. Yeah, because if you don't do that, well, the, the other option is to open up the, the hole in the rotor, but then every right. time you change the rotors, which on these cars probably isn't that often, but you'd have to right. open the hole up every time, which is why I do it on the axle, because then I don't have that problem in the future. Either way, most Joe Schmo in his shop doesn't have a lathe to cut either the inside face of the rotor or the, face, or the piece of it. No, Actually. I mean, it, it doesn't fit in my lathe. Like, my lathe, the throat's too small because yeah. I have to go to Spons and use his because he's got big whammer jammer blade over there. Right. Yeah, it's just... Hot rotting is not profitable. Why do we do this? Because of what is punishment? All right, well, I'm studded. Pressed in. It's nice using the press because I know they're seated. These axles do give you the option of going to the bigger lug studs, which we are not going to do on this car because this isn't a race car. But let's put the axles in, button it up, put fluid in it, and then we are done with that stage of this process. And we can move to brake lines, brake hoses, and park brake cables. So to answer Austin's question of what would a fellow do at home uh, and ran into this problem with the brake rotors, well, 
you would either use a rotary tool with a carbide bit and open up the hole in the rotor or use a Dremel with uh, barrel sanders or a stone and in this case it's not that big of an interference but it's enough to be a problem um, I still chose to do the uh, modification of the axle because it's just easier long term uh, but yeah, if you're at home and you're doing this, basically you're going to just ream out the inside of the rotor until it fits the, the brake, the axle. And that's probably why they suggest in the directions to check your fitment before you go all in on it. Um, so just one of those things you need to look out for when you are doing custom stuff. Yes, it's for this car, but perhaps what they built it from had a different center core diameter when they spec those rotors out, they don't work with all applications. And in this case, it's not even the right axle for the car, so you know that's a whole other situation where the car showed up and you think it has what it has in it, and it doesn't because this is a 68 to 72 rear axle in a 67 car. So it's actually a half inch wider axle shaft on both sides than what the 67 and lower A-body cars came with. So, you know, these cars are 60, 70 years old now. Lord only knows how many times they've been taken apart and put back together at this point. So, you really don't know what you're putting into it unless you're buying all the stuff brand new. Um, anyway, minor setbacks. Uh, I've got my park brake cables in. I've got my hoses on. I'm going to go ahead and weld on my tabs to hold my brake hoses steady on the axle. Build my new uh, axle, sorry, brake hose, brake lines. I can't speak today brain's mush um but yeah then we'll be putting this thing down bleeding the brakes uh i will have to get a proportioning valve for this that did not come in the kit because going from this drum to this disc requires a different proportioning valve so we'll have to get that coming i didn't think about that yesterday or the day before <laughs> um, and then i have a wideband band to to install in this so that the fella can read his uh, air fuel ratios so we'll get moving on with that but I am about ready to put wheels back on this thing once I have blood the brakes because I don't want to get brake fluid all over his wheels and tires well we're wrapping her up with the wheel on I have more than a the full diameter of the uh, lug stud um, getting in contact with my lug I usually like to see one and a half at a very minimum, and we're pretty close to that. Um, but more than the full diameter lengthwise is enough to be acceptable. I prefer one and a half, but that's me. What do you guys do for lug nut engagement? I'll have to actually look up what they recommend. I know in race applications, they want to see it coming all the way through the lug so that they know they're locked down correctly. I like these rotors. These are uh, just a radial vent, so they're not a directional rotor, so you could put them the other way, which is a little more aggressive, or more aggressive looking. I think this looks good. And it looks good under the, under the wheel. Of course, we're gonna be pulling them off for a regular standard rotor, or we're gonna be talking the customer into drilled and slotted to match these for the front, which is, I think, what I would do. But we'll see what he wants to do. I need to put fluid in the rear diff. Let's get this last wheel hung and we'll get this thing outside. And uh, we'll figure out what we need to do with the brakes because the brakes feel, the brake pedal feels odd. So we're gonna have to figure that out. right there um, the brakes are garbage it probably 
Oof, it probably needs a brake proportioning valve. Um, it has the correct disc disc, like Corvette style master cylinder in it. Uh, and there's the pots are the same size, so the master cylinder should be good. I've never had good luck with those smaller diameter uh, boosters. They've never really worked right in my time. Um, I often end up pulling those out and putting something else in, but we'll see what happens with it. I'm going to shut it off and move on to other things uh, that are here in the lot, as you probably saw in the video there. Uh, I need to get that done for the guys for tomorrow. So I'm going to pull that in here right now so that I can start on it first thing in the morning and hopefully have it done in the afternoon. Uh, thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below. Uh, this Chevelle's been a bit of a pain, but uh, we will get through it. We'll find out the, the rest of the items that it needs for proper braking. Because um, it's not there yet. But sometimes the battles are long and drawn out. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.